Hi everyone, here's the Bookchemist once again. Today I'm reviewing A Gambler's Anatomy by Jonathan Lethem, which is published in the UK as The Blot, for whatever reason. I'm not sure about other countries. And which is later, uh, Jonathan Lethem's latest novel. Uh, for a few weeks more, in November, his uh, next novel, The Feral Detective, is coming out. Uh, and I'll definitely be reviewing that one too before the end of the year. Now, about Gambler's Anatomy. It seems to me that among the nerdiest writers in contemporary literature, people who have talked about uh, nerd culture and genre fiction and uh, role-playing games and board games in their fiction or in interviews they've discussed uh, the influence of all this stuff on the writing, people such as Michael Chabon, Huna Diaz, uh, David Mitchell, Colson Whitehead, among all these people, Jonathan Lethem occupies a prominent position, but he is also a quintessentially coolest cat than all those other people. He grew up in Brooklyn, in a sort of hippish commune, in a rather edgy place. Uh, he grew up reading um, cult fiction and watching all sorts of uh, important cinema. I mean, if all these writers were kids in the 80s in some Indiana town, I do not think he would be playing Temple of Elemental Evil in David Mitchell's basement, I, th I think he would be hanging out outside the high school trying to score some glue. In this way, I do not really see him engage with the furthest end of the nerd culture spectrum, with stuff such as Dungeons and Dragons and role-playing games in general, miniature games, war games and such. In this way, in this sense, uh, while stuff such as comic books or nerd culture occupy a prominent position in Lethem's Hoover, he has also engaged uh, with a nerdier, even nerdier stuff, uh, games in particular a couple of times in his writing, but he has done so with both a curious eye and with something that I don't want to call necessarily contempt, but that feels to me a bit like skepticism. There's a story in men and cartoons called The Vision, where a character attends, a, the main character attends a party where people are playing the very popular board game slash party game Mafia. You may know it as Werewolf. Uh, it's a very famous um, uh, hidden roles bluffing game. And he approaches the party, approaches the game with a bit again, of contempt slash skepticism. He feels that the emotions and the drama of the game are fake, of course, and are uh, pre-packed uh, and are not true, and he insists on playing a different game with a much more, a much stronger emotional uh, impact in order to show how true conversations and how true interactions between human beings should be like. And I personally felt 100% like the story was sort of calling the main character out on his bullshit, was showing how cruel he was being, but I would need to reread it in order to say how much of that is engineered, how much of that is implicit in the story itself, in the writing, or how much comes out of it, you know, out of my own personal reading of it, for instance. I personally am a big fan of board games. I tend to maybe look at them a little bit too positively. Um, in another, um, in Dissident Gardens, a novel I reviewed recently, uh, there's a beautiful passage on video games, especially early video games, arcade games, uh, where a kid plays these arcade, arcade games. He's a Quaker kid kid, a pacifist, he plays them uh, without using violence. Uh, and again, there's a beautiful reflection there on how vi video games without violence feel somehow wrong. And there too, I am not 100% certain whether that part of the text is making fun of video games as a media, or it is making fun of, uh, you know, people's perception of, of video games, how people uh, are usually a bit obtuse when thinking and uh, considering video games. Gambler's Anatomy takes Lethem's fascination with games, which once again may very well be a function of my reading of him. I'm not claiming like he has a hidden pension for games he has never embraced. Uh, it takes this fascination and exploits it throughout a whole novel. The main character uh, in this novel is a professional backgammon hustler, and a uh, professional gambler in fact, and backgammon 
Diamond does play an important role throughout the book, and I'm sure it would have been better had I learned how to play the fucking game before I read the novel. Uh, if you're serious about reading this book, I definitely recommend that, because you're going to appreciate uh, the several backgammon games that are described in the novel. You're going to appreciate them um, to a fuller extent. But at the same time, do not believe like you have to learn how to play backgammon in order to enjoy this, uh, this book. You can definitely uh, follow the action without knowing the rules, and it's not like all of the book uh, is dedicated to backgammon, especially in the second half, the game plays a rather marginal role. Or does it? I let you decide that, because one of the greatest things about this book, one of the beautiful things about Gambler's Anatomy, is how the um, very concrete games that, that are described in the early pages, actual games with, you know, two characters, usually the main character and an opponent playing each other, sort of shift gradually into a broader game between the characters, a game that is not, not quite a game of bluffing, but still is a game of opposing strategies. Uh, what I mean is that one of the most fun things you can do with Gambler's Anatomy is trying to decode what the characters are all about. Uh, what is their purpose? What's their aim? Are they really as genuine and are ho as honest as they appear? Do they have a, uh, a hidden game in their head they're playing? Are they tricking other characters into doing something or something else? There's lots of intrigue in this book, and by God, there's lots of very interesting characters. The main character himself, with his bizarre powers, which I'm not going to describe in the video, uh, let us just say that this is a good addition, a great addition, to fantastic literature uh, in general, in the broadest possible sense. There's the anarchist cook working at Kropotkin's sliders. Is he for real? There's the German sex worker slash angelic figure. There's that messed up a couple uh, of very wealthy people at the heart of much of the action in the book. There's the surgeon, and I should definitely add that, um, you know, I'm not going to talk about the plot much, I never do that, but I should add that this has one of the most thrilling and interesting plots I've encountered in Lethem's entire over. It feels very much, because of the way it handles um, fantastic um, elements, because of its thrilling plot and very interesting characters, uh, and because of its sheer size, it feels very much like one of Lithem's earliest works. It reminded me a lot of stuff such as um, um, uh, Bad Moon, Amnesia Moon, never a good sign when you don't remember the title of a book, or even As She Climbed Across the Table, great novel, absolute science fiction masterpiece in my opinion. But there's a catch, actually. The, um, you know, the blot, uh, which gives the title to the UK edition of the novel. Uh, this blot is both a term in backgammon, but it is also something that uh, troubles the main character in the very first pages of the book. Not going to spoil you anything, you, you discover about this very early. Uh, this guy has a blot as a dark stain taking up part of his field of vision, so, so that he has trouble looking directly at things. And it seemed to me like throughout much of the reading, it was almost, bizarrely enough, it was almost like I had a blot in my field of vision that made it very difficult to focus 100% on the novel and on its action. I always felt like very, very close to being distracted by anything around me. And I guess that the reason is that for all that this is a brilliant book and it's well orchestrated and features very interesting reflections, a thrilling plot, interesting characters, this is not very much of an addictive read. It, it's not particularly enthralling, if you ask me. I never felt like I was hooked by the action or by the characters. Sure, they are interesting, but you know, much of this book, um, several of its reflections are connected with this idea of the main character as somebody who doesn't want really to connect with people, who wants to be shielded from other people. And it feel, felt to me like he was succeeding throughout much of the book. It felt to me like I, I couldn't really connect with his motives and with uh, the trouble he goes on and he goes through 
uh, a lot of trouble in the course of the book. When it comes to its political reflections, the book is brilliant and very stimulating. Uh, it's set in Berkeley mostly and draws comparisons between uh, the very rich people in corporate America and uh, political dissidents and people who dream of overthrowing the system, even though they maybe don't necessarily have a plan in place. It also inevitably draws comparisons between the Berkeley of the present and the Berkeley of the 60s, considering the very important place that that town occupies in the history of protest in America. When it comes to that reflection on backgammon uh, that goes on throughout the entire book, which I mentioned, uh, a character in here, that anarchist chef at one point calls board games the opium of the masses, uh, and it's not that clear to me here too whether the point of the novel is that this game backgammon is a way for the main character again to shield himself away from real human connections and that the novel is a bit critical of this idea of, uh, of games on the, of the type of engagement um, that is created by playing games together uh, but at the same time there are some very interesting games being played in here um, and the novel features some interesting reflections on the difference between backgammon and poker and it reflects on how backgammon may be more egalitarian as a game that stuff such as, for instance, chess, where if you are a super genius or you have a mind of a certain type, you can foresee so many moves into the future. You can do that with backgammon. Uh, there are truly some interesting reflections, and here too, uh, it seems to me like, once again, Lethem's ambiguity when it comes to games uh, comes to the surface, which is beautiful and so much more interesting and stimulating and sheer fun than had he just been defending or condemning the stuff without any nuance. And yet, I still think that this lacks something, that he did. I, I wasn't uh, especially hooked. I think, uh, ultimately, do I recommend the book? I think this is a book for Lethem's fans, uh, which is not a bad thing at all. I uh, personally think Jonathan Lethem is one of my favorite writers. I think he's one of the best writers uh, working today. Uh, I would recommend this stuff to anyone. Maybe start with something else. I think that this book, for all that it's beautiful, for all that it features such uh, beautifully orchestrated reflections, it lacks that magic spark. Also, uh, this what I'm going to say is not a problem with me necessarily, but I believe that um, some people may have the same issue with uh, Gambler's Anatomy they had with You Don't Love Me Yet, also by Lethem. Um, the fact that the characters in here are very interesting, again, as I mentioned, but still they are not necessarily people you may wish to be friends with. What I want to say is, if you are looking for a book uh, uh, whose characters you can relate with, and that, you know, you can uh, sympathize with them and um, root for them, not necessarily the book for you. Um, all of the people in here seem uh, more or less obnoxious. And finally, uh, <laughs> this is actually a significant point. If you are one of those people uh, who, when you're watching stuff such as House, MD, or Grey's Anatomy, or uh, medical shows in general, you look away from the screen where, uh, when the camera zooms in on the operating table, Keep in mind that there's a rather long couple of chapters uh, at the core of this novel where a rather gruesome operation is described in vivid details. Um, th th there are definitely some graphic passages in this book. Keep that in mind in case you're squeamish. And hey, thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, in a second I'll put links on the screen to my review of Dissident Gardens, which is a great historical novel by Lithem, a bit weird, uh, quite different in my opinion from the rest of his oeuvre, and to Chronic City, which is one of his uh, very best novels, if you ask me. Uh, and let me know what you think of Gambler's Anatomy, because I know not that that many people love this novel necessarily. I think maybe they shared my opinion. It was good. It wasn't necessarily magic. Um, also, I've I read from some people. Uh, some people compare this book to like Inherent Vice or other rec recent Pinchon stuff. I didn't necessarily feel that. Um, some of the reflections, sure, I could see the connection, but the style to me was too different uh, to draw a comparison. But let me know what you thought about that too, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.